The term Andretti became a trending one within the last few years, with Andretti Global's attempt to join F1. But a few decades back, the Andretti name was famous within Formula One due to a different reason. There was a talented, young racing driver from America called Mario Andretti, who dominated not only Formula One, but also a number of other racing categories as well. Welcome back to Total F1. Let's find some interesting facts about Mario Andretti's Formula One career. But before we proceed, hit that subscribe button and smash the bell icon for more exciting updates. Mario Andretti is an Italian-born American who migrated to the land of the free, searching for his fortune. Mario had a twin brother called Aldo, and they had to spend the first seven years of their lives in a camp for people who were displaced by World War II. It was a challenging time period for the entire Andretti family, and they moved to Lucca with the hope of settling there. Mario and Aldo cycled from home to watch the Millimilia road race, which ran hundreds of miles through different Italian landscapes, including Luca. This helped create some interest inside young Mario towards motorsport, and it was further enhanced when he got the opportunity to watch the 1954 Italian Grand Prix. That race featured powerful challenges from teams like Ferrari, Maserati, and Lancia, and little Mario was totally attracted towards the pace of these cars. This was the first time that Mario saw the performances of champions like Juan Manuel Fangio and Alberto Ascari, and later, Ascari became his inspiration and role model. His parents decided to migrate to the United States in 1955, and Nazareth, Pennsylvania became his new hometown. This city helped the twin brothers to lay their foundation to become racing drivers. They built their own Hudson Hornet and shared it to participate in the stock car events that happened in their hometown. Unfortunately, Aldo faced an accident and experienced some serious injuries. This resulted in a loss of interest in racing, but Mario continued his motorsport career and was able to record 21 victories out of 46 stock car races held around Pennsylvania during the period between 1960 and 1961. With the success that he earned in his hometown, Mario promoted himself to the United States Automobile Club's stock car events in 1965 and finished the debut season as 12th in the standings. He recorded his first ever victory in the series during the 1967 season and continued his stock car career till the 1975 season, adding multiple victories to his name. In parallel to stock car racing, he joined the NASCAR championship as well. He participated in 14 NASCAR events, most notably winning the 1967 Daytona 500 for the Holman Moody team. Apart from that, he competed in the 24 Hours of Le Mans and the International Race of Champions series as well. Mario's first exposure to open-wheel racing happened with his participation in the midget car event back in 1961. Andretti became a very successful driver there, building his reputation as an open-wheel racer as well. With Mario's versatility in different motorsport categories, he became a regular appearance in different motorsport events within America, building extreme popularity around him. But he was not satisfied with those achievements, and his ultimate dream was to join the Formula One Championship. He was able to catch the attention of Lotus boss Colin Chapman with his third place finish during the 1965 Indianapolis 500 event. But it took three more years to promote this talented young driver into the Formula One grid. His F1 debut happened with the Lotus F1 team during the 1968 US Grand Prix, and he was able to beat all the experienced drivers in qualifying, becoming the pole sitter of the race. Even though Lotus team was ready to offer a full-time driver contract to this young American, Mario was not ready to accept, as he had a lucrative motorsport career in America. Within the next few years, Mario made several Formula One appearances infrequently with teams like Lotus, March, and Parnelli, which were not very competitive in that era. Mario Andretti reached a peak point in his F1 career when he made his Ferrari debut at the 1971 South African Grand Prix. In the same race, he was able to record his first ever Formula One victory. Three weeks later, he drove for Ferrari, winning the non-championship Cuesta Grand Prix in the United States. At the end of the season, Ferrari was ready to promote the American driver as the number one driver of the team. Once again, he declined it. 
when it was 1975, his part-time mindset changed as he experienced some kind of decline in his USAC career. For the first time, he drove a full F1 season in 1975 with the US-based Parnelli team. It was new to F1, and Andretti wasn't able to repeat the same success that he enjoyed with the same team in IndyCar and Formula 500 series. Even though he collected only five points with the Parnelli F1 team, he decided to stay with the same team for the following season as well. Unfortunately, Parnelli decided to cease his operations just after two races of the 1976 season. Then Mario returned to Colin Chapman's Lotus F1 team, where he truly began his F1 career. He was able to win the 1976 Japanese Grand Prix, recording the first win of the team in five years. That boosted the confidence of Mario Andretti, and he continued that momentum by winning four races in the following year. Lotus engineers developed the Lotus 79 package, which was strong enough to challenge the 1978 title, and Mario easily recorded six victories, becoming the world champion. But Chapman's team lost the momentum since then, experiencing a greater decline in terms of performance. Mario stayed two more seasons loyal to Chapman, allowing him time to bring the team into the right direction. But these two seasons ended as unproductive ones, and he decided to leave the team with the hope of joining Alfa Romeo for the 1981 season. Even though Alfa Romeo's car was competitive, there were some issues related to reliability. Because of that reason, he never became a title contender with Alfa Romeo either, and decided to leave Formula One with the hope of focusing again on his racing career in America. But he made a brief return with Williams as a temporary replacement for Carlos Reutemann, who suddenly quit the team. Once again, he got the opportunity at Ferrari as a replacement for the seriously injured driver Didier Pironi for the last two races of the season. Out of these two races, Mario was able to take the pole position and score a third place finish during the Italian Grand Prix. After completing his F1 career, he made a full-time return to IndyCar racing and continued that up to 1994. But his racing career extends beyond that, and the 2000 Le Mans is considered as his last competitive racing appearance. After beginning his life as a small boy in a displaced camp, he overcame different challenges to become one of the greatest drivers in motorsport history. Andretti is one of only three drivers to win races in Formula One, IndyCar, the World Sports Car Championship, and NASCAR, as every driver can't show a great adaptability to different racing categories as shown by this great driver. What do you think about Mario Andretti's motorsport career? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to get more exciting Formula One news. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.